are shopping cars, there are commuting cars, there are cars designed just for the school run, and then there are cars designed just for having fun. Toys and unashamed of it. And our lucky car buyer this week is looking for just such a machine. But before we meet the cars, let's meet the buyer. This is Paul. He owns and runs an IT consultancy and lives in the glorious countryside around Charlesworth. He's a very lucky man. He's looking for a new toy car and we reckon we can help him find one. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for being our car buyer. Now, a man looking for a toy car and not afraid to admit it. Yes, definitely. You have no shame about this. This None is for high days and holidays. One has to enjoy oneself. Well, one does indeed. <laughs> now, you already have a toy car. Yes, I do, yes. Um, an XJS right. Jaguar. Quite well, old, but This uh, is another classic. one. This is something a bit special in the garage to scoot up to France. In. Well, I've had that eight years now, so I think it's time to have a change. New toys. Yeah. You are. And a bit man. more reliable. You are a man after my own. <laughs> I thought we are going to get on. OK, we've got three absolute beauties, Pierre. And this right. is a dream assignment for us, because they're all lovely cars. First up, Corvette. Yep. 5.7 litre, V8, classic piece of Americana. Well within your budget. Yep. What do you reckon? Seems very nice. Um, it's very big. Very comfortable. That's very the thing. red. The only thing about this is the left-hand drive. Okay. But, but the we'll power delivery is superb and it sounds gorgeous. Well, we'll see how you get on with it. We'll right. see how you get on. I don't know. I, I think you might find the left-hand drive isn't such a problem when you've sampled that grunt. Right. Well, talking about grunt, our next car has got it too. Let's go and have a look. Okay. So from a classic piece of Americana to a real true Brit, TVR Cerbera. Big, bad, mean. What do you think of it? Beautiful car. Uh, this is the V8, I understand, with the uh, four and a half litre engine, 350 brake horsepower. Sounds really nice. It looks the part. Now, I think, in an odd sort of way, this is as close as you can get to your Jag. Do you know what I mean? In that it's long and low and slightly sinister. You've got a, yeah, you know I can I mean? see what I can see what you mean. It's it is about the same length. It's yeah. about as low. I mean, completely different um, in other ways, as you say. It's not made of metal, and it's a newer car. But somehow, it just reminds me of it. It could bias me a little. It's a bad boy car. You see, I think oh, we're learning more. It's a beautiful car. It's a beautiful <laughs> car. It is a stunning thing. Well, we'll find out what you think of the drive of that. But first, right. we've got our third car to meet, and it's a bit of a contrast. Smashing. And it is from Germany, a BMW Z3 M. Are you familiar with them? Yes, I'm uh, familiar with the brand. I've never driven one. I've driven the 1.9. Right. Um, which was a bit tame, to be honest. You're not smiling so... much when you see this. Right? Well, look, it's a completely different car to the right. 1.9. Honest. Well, you wouldn't bung you in an ordinary Z3 compared to these two. Right. Really. Well, it does promise astonishing power, yes, I must yeah. admit. And when they aim it up, I mean, it's more than just a few tweaks. It's pretty significant changes. Right. Okay, well, you're going to find out for yourself because I've got in my pocket the keys, if I can get these. Now, I should tell you, these are the keys to Thank a you. brand new car. Right. There's a reason for this. We did have a used version, which you would get within your budget, but we broke it really badly. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to use this brand new one, courtesy of BMW, but it will at least give you a flavour of the car. Yeah? I won't complain. Right, let's give it a go. Well, this is it, our first car, the BMW yep. Z3M. Now, you know the score, we get a drive. Admittedly, it's probably not as long with the car as you'd really like, and you don't get to True. really put it through its paces, but you have a go. Yes. Immediate impressions, what do you think of it? It's very tall. I, I think I mentioned to you that um, I've driven the 1.9 before. Yes. So this is uh, certainly a step ahead. An important part of all of this is we're looking at these cars. We know you're a sensible, mature, responsible businessman. Yes. <laughs> but you are buying a toy here. Yes. It's, it's got to look right, hasn't it? Let's be honest. Posing is part of this. What about the image of this thing? I think it says very sensible. Um, it relies on people knowing it's an M, I think. Yeah. And that would be a concern. It's pretty obvious at the back, I think. Four tailpipes looks really well. Um, I suppose it's discreet more than anything. I would not have bought one on the basis of the 1.9, so I'm quite pleasantly surprised by this. Oh good, well it's probably been worth it having it in the mix today, just just for that, just to make you look differently in the car that perhaps you'd have written off without thinking about. Uh, on the plus side again with this is, because you occasionally like to romp off down to the south of France, don't you, and your wife together? Yes. Reliability wise, not a problem. Well that's it of course, it's outstanding liability. Yeah. BMW, you just don't question it, do you? Not sure about this colour, personally. No. Man, so, you never know, it could have been yellow. It could have been yellow. Could have been bright yellow. 
Well, Paul's test drive in our first car is nearly over, and whilst he enjoys the last few moments, Ian Royal has got more information on the car. So, Paul, we've picked out for you today a fine piece of Germanic engineering built by quality craftsmen in the south of Germany, in Munich, by BMW. It's the Z3M Roadster, except that it isn't built by Germans. It's built by the good old boys in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Yes, it surprises people that this car isn't built in Germany. And I was lucky enough a few years ago to go on a trip to the factory where they build the Z3s. Now, at the time, we'd only seen the 1.9 and the 2.8. There were rumours that there was an M version on the way, but we hadn't seen it until we wandered around the factory. And there was one lurking in the corner. Marvellous. So what do you get on this car? You get a straight six engine, 321 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in just over five seconds, a top speed of 155 miles an hour. It's loaded with just about everything you would want, including an electric hood for when the sun finally shines. And what about prices? 40 grand new, but if you can put up with a pastel yellow one like this, 25,000. The Z3M uses BMW's renowned straight-six engine, 3.2, 321 brake horsepower with lots of tweaking from BMW's motorsport division. Ah. Well, there we go. The first of our three suggestions, and come on, you've got to admit, it's not exactly your ordinary Z3. It's it? just a little bit special, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yes, a little it bit is. more. It's, uh, what do you think? A powerful little beast. Yeah. Very nice, actually. Would fit the bill. Yeah. Definitely fit the bill. It's funny, it was almost the, the fact that it can be so docile that appeals as much as the fact that it is a real driving machine. It's amazing. It? It's amazing. For so that amount usable. of power to be so tractable. Yeah. Still not sure I see this colour on you, really. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <with> the shirt. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, look, our second car is all right. lined up and ready and warmed up the TVR. We'll be getting okay. to grips with that very shortly. Right. But before we do that, it's time to hear from Simon, the car doctor. The Volkswagen Beetle is probably the most popular classic car in the world, simply because they're so simple to work on in that everything will bolt on, bolt off with almost a simple set of pliers and a basic socket set, so they're well liked. But if you buy into those humble underpinnings of a motor car, but fancy something slightly different and maybe can't afford something like a Porsche 356, maybe this is the ideal uh, sort of in-between. It's called a Carmen Gear and they were made from the early 60s to the mid 70s and they are quite rare, but they are uh, Volkswagen Beetle underneath. Where the difference is, is the body is totally different. And that whereas with a Beetle, you can replace a set of wings for about 80 pounds, these are very, very expensive. So the owner of this car actually found out recently in that this wing got slightly damaged and needed replacing. And when the owner managed to get hold of one, it then cost 2000 pounds to have it fitted. And the reason for that is, is because uh, this is a handmade body and there are no seams so this wing has had to be joined to the body all the seams leaded up filed away and painted so something to bear in mind that even though you might think yeah it's only a you know, sort of souped up beetle uh, the bodies are ferociously expensive so don't sort of fall into uh, a bit of a trap there buying one thinking that you're going to replace the panels maybe as easily as you have done on a beetle in a past life Thank you, Simon, and there will be more from the car doctor next week on Used Car Heaven. Right, back to business. This week we're looking for a toy car for Paul, you lucky man. We've already had a go in the BMW Z3M, and you quite liked it in the end, didn't you? Yes, I did. It was uh, a little surprise. It warmed upon you. Now, it this did. I know you're going to like. TVR Cerbera. It's big, it's bad, it's mean, and it's your kind of motor, I reckon. And it's beautiful. It is lovely, isn't it? It's not a bad-looking thing, but it is sinister, and I know you say it isn't, but you like bad boy cars. I mean, look at it. It's class. It's a I have to say, it's class. car, it really is. Well, let's give it a go, because it's not just looking at it. Climb in and have a drive. Very positive. So, car number two, and um, now, I, I, I can always tell. I've been doing this programme a while now. Sometimes there's a little gleam that happens, and you right? smiled a lot around <laughs> this car. Yeah. Oh, it's a gorgeous car. It's kind of the Oops. closest of the three to what you've got, to your ACS, isn't it? Well, that's way? true, yeah. Still a hard top and yeah. long, <laughs> big. <laughs> very, very big. This has got presence. And brutal. Yeah. 
So your immediate impression is just tootling around, what do you think? I love the car, yeah. I love the TVR image, everything about it. You still, it's just this problem about uh, finish, you know. I'll put up with some finish, to be yeah. honest. But, because that's about it, the giant horn in a car. Bodywork has got to be pristine, has to be no rust, I won't put up with any rust. Well, you'd be alright on this, like, plastic. Well, that's right. It's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, TV. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be short sure performance on this. I, I wanted to go w up from the Jag, and obviously all these cars today are one yeah. step up on that power band. Um, and if they do it with class, all the better. This does have class. Mm. Oh, you could pitch it anywhere in this. Yeah. Anywhere at all. As long as I wasn't by the side of the motorway. <laughs> I have to warn you. It might happen one day. I know. I, <laughs> all my friends tell me this. <laughs> TV, I will deny it, but we know the truth. Mm. But this is compared to the BM, which is maybe a bit more sanitised. I mean, this is a proper, full-blooded... Out-and-out sports car. This car approves of hunting, you know? And yeah. it's, it's kind of... It drinks port. <laughs> but it's not bad at uh, Top Gear. It's very torquey. Yeah. You can amble around traffic. Yeah, apart from the sheer bulk of it. But uh, as you've said, you've but driven I mean, your Jag for years. It's not a problem, is it? Well, while Paul continues to grapple and get to groups with the mighty TVR Cerbera, Ian Royal has got some more information on it. Just imagine it's a lovely summer's afternoon. You're in Blackpool, strolling down the promenade. You've gone past the tower, past South Pier, and on to the Pleasure Beach for an afternoon of fun. Because the Pleasure Beach in Blackpool is where you normally get your thrills. That is, apart from Mrs Miggins' guest house. But there is somewhere else in Blackpool, let me tell you. It's the TVR factory. You see, at the TVR factory, they produce some rather stunning British sports cars. Beefy, butch. Fantastic engines under the bonnet, a little bit different in their styling, away from the norm. Take this car, for instance, the TVR Cerbera. Launched about five years ago, it's been a big success for the company. You get a 4.2 V8 engine under the bonnet, which sounds fantastic. 0 to 60 in four seconds, top speed, well, it's seriously quick, let me tell you. But when you buy something like this TVR Cerbera, you have to put up with little quirks and foibles that you find. The fit and finish on some cars is not what you'd expect, say, of the German manufacturers. This car costs new over £40,000, but now it's 24 grand. Wow, what a car. The TVR Cerbera. Cracking V8 engines. 4.2 or 4.5 V8, or there is a 4-litre straight 6 which you could look out for as well. Bags and bags of power. Ah, that is not a car <laughs> that you simply hop in and out of. But we're not looking for a car for everyday use, we're looking for a toy car for Lucky Paul here. What do you reckon, the TVR Cerbera, more like it? Superb, lived yeah. up to its reputation. Yeah. Um, what a noise. It is. I mean, the it, power it's, delivery. It's, it's got super. everything going. I feel like a sort of a, a cartoon gangster climbing out of that thing, personally. I think it's, <laughs> it's pretty low. So, it's got some serious <laughs> presence in style. Yeah. Okay, well, we could have a serious contender there. There were some big grins for you. We'd like to see that unused car. Right. It? But it's not all over yet. We've got another car to drive. After the break, we'll be having a go in the mighty Corvette. And Ian Royal will have another suggestion completely. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Hello and welcome back to Used Car Heaven. Now this week we are looking for a toy car and I like doing this because we get to play with some seriously exotic bits of kit. And we're looking for the car for our buyer, Paul, and I've got to say, you are a man after my own heart because you're making no secret of the fact this is a toy, isn't it? It's for Definitely. Fun. Good for you. Already had a go on the TVR server, yep. quite like that. Yep. Already had a go on the BMW Z3M and actually surprise yourself, you quite like yes, that too. Nice. Well, it's not over yet because it's still to come, we're going to have a go in this little red Corvette, only ain't that little with 5.7 litre V8 under the bonnet. But before we do that, Ian Royal has another suggestion. Well, if the BMW, the TVR and the Corvette don't do the trick, are there any other exotic cars around £30,000? Oh yes, there certainly are. It's Italian, it's ultra stylish, has superb pedigree and breeding, and has strong links with Ferrari. The Maserati 3200 GT is a cracking car, although the latest Spider soft top at nearly 70 grand is way out of budget. The early 3200 GTs, though, are now within reach. You get a stonking turbocharged engine producing 370 brake horsepower, styling straight out of the finest Italian fashion houses, and a sports car that will seat four people in comfort. 
The Maserati was launched in 1999 and early T-Reg cars are now around £30,000 even from a main dealer. Best to go though for the automatic, which is worth every penny. Thank you, Ian. That's very nice, I'm sure. But I've got a sneaking suspicion that this third one of our suggestions might just be the one for our man Paul. What do you reckon of the vet? It's very nice. I'm um, quite surprised. Very comfortable. Very comfy and it makes a glorious Wide. noise. Fire mm. it up and give it a go. Let's take it for a drive. Oh, yes. So car number three, and I didn't know if you were going to like this, and I suspect this isn't a car you would have thought of with Corvette. I think you might like this. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't I have mean, been on wow. your list, would it, automatically? I've read a couple of reports on the Corvette, yeah. test reports, which were quite impressive. Mm. Um, but this left-hand left -hand drive was the thing that would yeah. pop me off, but it does have a lot of toys. It's also a very big car. I mean, when you talk about presence, this this yeah. this has got presence. It's enormous. It's very same presence level, I think, as TVR. I'd say so. I think so, particularly in red, and it's got to be a little red Corvette. What about the engine, which kind of makes its presence felt right from the start? Yeah. Well, very smooth, you see, very docile. Mm. And a but, fabulous uh, noise. Quite a bit of umph there. Yeah. Now, what about this image, Paul? It's not, um, it's not a subtle car. No, I could entertain with this. You're all right. I could entertain with this. See, this would I, do the job. I think your clients, when they pitch up at your house and you just roll the garage door up, there it is. Yep. Uh, I'll pick them up even. Better they, still, pick them up. They're going to smile, aren't they? <laughs> and take them out for a nice lunch. I think they'll be impressed. Well, whilst we see how much bigger Paul's grin can grow in this, the Corvette, Ian Royal has got more information on it. Now, Paul's already driven the TVR and the BMW M3. Roadster had a lot of fun in both. So what's the third car that we've set up for him? Well, it has to be an American muscle car. We thought we'd go stateside for the ultimate car, the Corvette. It's gone through five generations, and this is the latest, the C5. So what do you get for your money? Well, you get a target top, so you can take this bit of the roof off when the weather goes nice. You also get a car that's fully loaded. It's got leather, it's got climate control, it's got cruise control. And of course, it's left-hand drive. Would that bother you, Paul? Hopefully not. Would it bother you also the fact that this car only does about 12, 13 miles to the gallon around town, run about 20 on a long run? But what it has got in its favor, this car, is a decent boot. Far bigger than on the TVR or the BMW. So how much will this piece of American history cost? 25,000 pounds. The Chevrolet Corvette is a car to be different in. It's got that fantastic, huge, 5.7-litre V8 engine, uh, churning out just under 340 brake horsepower. Ah. Every now and again, we get the pleasure on Used Car Heaven of showing somebody a car that they really wouldn't have thought about otherwise, and I get the impression this is one of those. It just wouldn't have been on your list, would it? It wouldn't, and it's... Fabulous car. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Great noise, comfortable, American Very vehicle. comfortable. Lasts forever. All the gadgets. All right, well, hopefully we've given mm. you a really painful decision to make. Mm. So whilst you wrestle with that and decide which one of these, let's face it, they're all lovely cars yeah. you're going to go for. Let's hear from Brad at the Trading Post. Listen to that. Awesome. This is a Tuscan S. As you can see, inside and out, a beautiful looking car. But there are a few points you need to be aware of when you're buying a TVR. As most of you know, these cars are British built in Blackpool by a guy called Trevor. And they are notoriously unreliable. So it's always wise to build into your budget £2,000 for maintenance and also a recovery option. If you're going to maintain these cars, always do it through a specialist TVR dealer. You get very, very little driving assist options on these cars. The most you're going to get is power steering. Those are the negatives. The plus side is the car is fantastic to look at. It's also extremely quick. For the level of money that you spend on one of these, there's no way you're going to be able to get a new Porsche or a Ferrari. And best of all, the car is British. 
Thank you very much, Brad. Right, this is it. The difficult moment, the crunch time. Hang on, why am I making this out to be so awful? You're deciding between three gorgeous cars. Paul, you've, you've put them in order, and in reverse order, in third place, the BMW Z3M. Why? It's clearly the sensible decision, there's no doubt about it, the depreciation. Um, it's got the badge, but at the end of the day, it's too sensible, really, for a hobby car. It's too sensible. It's too it. sensible. Even though it's beautifully engineered, Even stunningly though. put together, you're going to reject a gorgeous car like that. Yes. What a nice position to be in. In second place, then, is my personal favourite, the little red Corvette that ain't so little. I mm. love this. And I thought at one point we had you with this. I thought you were going to bite, but you're not. Why not? I would never have considered it until you introduced it today. Um, it's got all the gadgets you could possibly dream about. It's got the power, it's got the plastic panelling, won't rust. And yes, it would have been a very close decision had it not been left-hand drive. So And that's going to spoil your fun. I've got to have a, lot, it's a normal drive car. It's a yes. fun car, you've got to have that. All right, yes. well, that means in first place, and I'm quite impressed here, because you've really stuck to your guns, is the TVR Sabra. Yeah. There was a smile on your face as soon as you saw it, and that's still there. It, it's got to be this one. Yeah, you just, you just have to look at it. It's gorgeous, it sounds fantastic, the engines are beautifully made, it's a British car, just had everything going for it, a little unreliability perhaps, <laughs> but that doesn't put me off. Part of the fun, isn't that it? That doesn't really? put me off, it's I think a you're going to be car. very happy and I think it suits you down to the ground. I think this is the one. Good call. Thanks for coming on the programme. Thanks Richard. Cheers Paul, good to meet you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week for more used car heaven.